Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? This is your boy, Honcho J23. And you already know what time it is. It's time for another edition of the Independence Saint episode 75. I appreciate you guys for tuning in every single week, watching, showing love, showing support. I appreciate it 1000%. means absolutely the world to me. Um, I hope you guys have been enjoying you. I hope you guys have been enjoying your day. Happy Friday to everybody all over the world. Um, today we got a dope show. We're gonna be just talking about a few things. And with that being said, I got my guest in the building. He goes by the name of Art. He goes by the name of Young Two Six. So with that being said, let's chop it up. Y'all already know how we do. Let's get it. Lies and shit. Go the fuck on. Fuck. Oh, what's in there? Yo. What's good with you, my boy? Not much, not much. It's cooling, it's cooling. That's what it is. I'm over here trying to juggle two things at once. Can I walk through the car with that so it don't disconnect? Oh, yeah, see, boom, boom. Already, already. Yeah, we got we, we, we try to get this connection right, man. Yeah, man. Like, I had unlimited during the whole COVID shit, and I guess I literally just went over that shit probably like five minutes ago. So, I, that's why I, I ain't even know. I ain't know it was going slow like that at all. Oh, okay, okay. I'm about, to share, I'm about to share this. I'm about to share this with a couple of people before we go ahead and jump all the way into it. All right, well, I say, yeah, go ahead and, you know what I'm saying, get it shared, and then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had a couple of people that asked me to go ahead and let them know when I was going to jump onto this, so I said, I'm going to go ahead and get it to them. Yeah, man. There you go, bro. Okay, okay. Well, I see. I'm, like I say, go ahead and share it, and then we can, we can go ahead and hop into it, my boy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I got going on right this second. Baby. I'm saying right. to people who we speak. Boom. Let's see. Go. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, all right, we should be good. Let's get it rocking. You feel me? Already, well, like I said, hey, first of all, welcome to the, back to the show. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, it's been a minute, but I said, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, right, right. first things first, let us. So, so, first things first, you know what I'm saying? Reintroduce yourself to the people that know who you are, and we're gonna hop right into it. What's up with y'all, man? It's the boy Young Two Sick repping two up, two down, Virginia shit. You already know what it do for you. How y'all living? Man, I'm out here in Atlanta now. I'm about to take over. You feel me, man? We're waiting on the on certain shit to drop so we can get this music shit going, man. Definitely got to say Black Lives Matter. You know what I'm saying? I'm on Malcolm X shit. We've been on our Martin Luther King shit. That piece of shit ain't gonna do it. I'm sorry. Already, okay, okay. Well, look. So, so now going into that. So you know. Uh, you know, with you know the first topic, the first topic being Black Lives Matter. So, how has this whole Black Lives Black Lives Matter movement been? You know, how has that been affecting you in any kind of way, or has it been affecting you in any kind of way? Yeah, no, it's definitely affected me in a in a major way. Um, can you you can see me, right? You said what? You can still see me, right? Yeah, I can still see you. Yeah. Uh-uh. I'm going to just keep it genius, you know what I'm saying? Like I said in the previous statement, I'm on some Malcolm, Malcolm X shit. Like, I feel like we've been peaceful for years, for decades, you know what I'm saying? And look at where it's getting us, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, for the last damn near 10 to 15 years, what it seemed like multiple black people just get murdered throughout the year and nobody cares, you know what I'm saying? They have their little 15 minutes of fame where people protest and post, but... You know what I'm saying today it goes back in so I feel like with the riots all that people just you know what I'm saying people just kind of feeling like we have no outlet we just getting slaughtered for no reason people don't as a culture you know what I'm saying people just tired of that and at the end of the day ain't nobody gonna sit down and just let you walk all over them you feel me that's just not how it works out so I definitely understand the anger that a lot of black folk have right now inside their heart I understand the angst and I understand the action behind it. I completely understand right. it. Okay, now let me ask this now, and, and like I said, I'm sure you've been seeing it, but you know, with all the, you know, with all the vandal the vandalism going on and people burning buildings and breaking and shit, you know, stealing shit. Like, do you feel like that's a way to get the point across, or do you feel like it could be much, or it could be, or do you feel like it could be handled in a much better way? I think. I mean, it's half and half. I'm going to keep it G. 
Because, like, on one end, people saying that us being violent ain't going to – it's going to set us back. Which, to a certain degree, I understand why they're saying that. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. but – at the same time, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. And literally, right. we've been doing the peaceful protesting since Martin Luther King. They walked right, across right. the bridge. Half of those people got slaughtered. You know what I'm saying? Right. Every time there's a peaceful protest, we lose. You know right. what I'm saying? We lose We lose soldiers. We lose people. And that shit hurtful. And right. I think that, you know, I'm going to say this. Because I saw it in another video, and I completely agree. He said, he is yours. Right. If it's your home city, this is yours. So, right, you want to fuck it up? Understand at the end of the day, it's either gonna come out your pocket, or you as a community gonna have to be the one to go back to fix it. But I right. will say this: instead of just picking random places and just, you know, what I'm saying attacking them, attack establishments that will bring something more to the cause. It's, uh, you know, what I'm saying go to the hall, go downtown, go, go, go do. Do, do the places that are, you know, stay away from black-owned businesses. Right. Go to the places that are, you know, racist and, you know, things like that of that nature that, that you can dig up, but don't just pick random establishments because, you know, random chaos is going to cause exactly that, chaos. We don't yeah. want to cause chaos. We just want to wake up and realize that we're here. we real, and it's not, y'all keep doing this to us. The black man is the most cop. The black person is the most copied person on the planet. Hip hop right. literally infected the entire world. Right, I agree. I totally agree. Now, let me ask you this: When that, when it, you know, when it, when you was a kid growing up, did you ever in your in your kid like days, did you ever experience any racial profiling, or 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 you didn't really have to go through any of that? I'm from Virginia, bro. They okay. still growing cotton out there, like you know what I'm saying. Like, but I'm gonna say my worst racial experience came from North Carolina, to be honest. Um. When I was out there, when I first moved to Raleigh, um, I don't know, some lady thought me and my homeboy was going to rob her at 2 o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of the day. And all we was doing was donuts and Dunkin' Donuts. And she just was, like, asking the manager to watch us as she walked out or some shit. It's, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. We had a gas station. There's mad people, like. Right. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's a crazy situation. And it's And it's crazy how as I like to call it, the supremacy now uh, will do and say anything just to get somebody black either fucked up or either locked up. And I just think it's really, it's it's really crazy because, I mean, it's like now, you know, it's like we dealt with this way, way, way back when, but now to come up in 2020 and to now still be having this same issue reoccurring, you know, in current life, it's just, it's crazy yeah. to me. You know, so now, so now crazy, I'm so now I want to ask. So now I want to ask you this. So you know, if I remember correctly, they said that the you know that Floyd George Floyd was on his neck for I think eight minutes and forty nine seconds. Now my question to you as a black man: Do you feel like you would have stepped in to help, or do you feel like you would have just continued to just sit back and watch? Because you got some people that say, well, they want to step in, but then they didn't want to catch a charge. But the, what I've been telling people is my thing is I would pers- I would I would take a charge. Before I just let my man's die. Now I want to flip that because I want I'm gonna say this too. But say if there was one of your family members, what if there was one of your people? What how would your response would have been to that? If there was somebody that you care about, somebody that you love, how would you how would you would have responded? On both aspects. Now I'm gonna say if it was like say like you know I was there. I don't know George Floyd. You know what I'm saying? But right. I understand the black mindset of like you feel me like yeah. The police, like like we said, the police, and we be innocent. You know what I'm saying? So right. you can be innocent and die. So I understand the apprehensiveness of somebody who, you know, they standing in front of what's happening towards Floyd and they want to help. But if you're another black individual, you feel like, nigga, well, I'm going under the jail. If I hit right. or attack an officer, you don't have to do shit and you can die. So if I go right. and pull this officer off of him, even though I am trying to save a life, most of the time, they're going to railroad us. They're going to throw us under the butt. It might be a little exactly. trial, but at the end of the day, the person who pulled that officer off is still going to go to jail. They're going to get a charge, and shit going to happen to the officer. You know what I'm saying? So, that family member, I, ain't, I don't care. I'm I'm punching. I'm swinging. We're going to jail together. So we're going to die together. Right? But if it was somebody random, like I would want to help. I really would, but I don't. I can't sit here and say for a straight face that I would help. 
Cause like I said, being a black man, like I said, just dealing with the police in general without doing shit, you can fucking get fucked up. So I really? think is that people don't be trying to people don't be trying to give the police an excuse to fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? As a black person, right. you have to think like that. We, I know you know that. Other people who see this, they gonna relate to that. We have to think like that. I don't think white people think we like do, that. especially when it comes to dealing with the police. We have to kind of foreshadow. We have to predict how is this situation gonna play out. They gonna try to paint me out to be the angry black man. They gonna try to say, "Am I high right now?" And test me and say drugs in my system. They try to say that after George Floyd died. What does coronavirus have to do with somebody putting pressure on this man's windpipe? Damn in ten minutes. Right. You feel me, I, I totally, I don't make I totally sense. agree. So, 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 so now I'm gonna switch topics for a second. So, you know, and and uh, it's gonna be along the same, and it's gonna kind of be along the same lines. But when it comes to the music that you create and the music that you put out, now has has any of what's been going on affected you in a way to where you can now put some of this stuff into your music that you create and that you write? Yeah, most. Uh oh, buffering, buffering. Hold on, y'all. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, I can barely hear you. I don't know why I can barely hear you. Can you hear me now? Huh? I said, can you hear me now? I'm going to try to put my headphones back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, so I was saying, so has any of your, so any, so the music that you create, has any of this what's been going on with this whole George Floyd Black Lives Matter situation, has that affected your music? Has that, you know, have you decided to put, you know, create any music that speaks directly to this particular situation? I'm not going to say it has affected my music, but it's definitely, I feel like as a musician, you know what I'm saying, one of the main things is you're always looking for a topic to talk about. That's me. When I'm going to make a track, you feel me? Like it's either depending on what I'm already feeling, and that's gonna fuel the topic that I have to speak on, or it's gonna be, you know, something that triggers something like, 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 for instance, the George Floyd or something you want to speak on. I still want to do a, a a song for John Witherspoon, Pops. That was the nigga. You feel me? Like I grew up right, on right. Boy, so I got a whole beat with a sample from him and everything. So mm -hmm. I would say that when it came down to it, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like. That it has given a lot of artists a platform or something to speak on, you know what I'm saying? I think that a lot of I, I would recommend a lot of independent artists don't just use it for clout, honestly. Because I'm, I'm gonna say it like this: it's how, it's a touchy situation, but if you truly feel like you got something you want to say, say that shit. Don't be afraid to say that shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't be. Just make sure you got the right mindset going into what you're doing, and make sure you're positive with it. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of people out here that's getting canceled, and I know y'all see that. <laughs> They think it's a game, but exactly. as a coach, your people not playing no more. Your people tired, and you feel me. The sooner y'all see that, the better. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, so now switching gears for a minute. You know, going going into the music, going into the music, the music field. How long have you yeah. been doing music? How long have you been really following this whole music, this whole music thing? I've been doing like it's weird because I did. I started music when I was. When I was what fifteen, fourteen, mm -hmm. and it graduated into something of a passion of mine. You feel me? Like, like I've been um, I really didn't expect it to happen. I like science and shit, but I didn't even know I like music because I ain't grow up around my daddy. Come to find out, my daddy from Chicago, and he was one of the most popping DJs at his time in my hood when I was coming up when I was before I was born. So. You know what I'm saying? He hollered at my mama from the microphone in the club, and it was Murder, She Wrote. So it's like, I've been, I've been I'm a child of music. Like, music moves my gears. Like, when I listen to music, I'm sad. I listen to music when I'm, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I'm a child of music. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, what would you say for you has been your most favorite song that you've written? That has that has really, you know, saying got you through some pretty tough times. Um, that's hard because I'm gonna keep. I like all. My, I like. I like like ninety percent of my. Shit, but I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say that. Mm, <laughs> I'm gonna say it's two songs because they opposite. They polar opposites. You feel me? Like one song is 
is is representation of my hood, some lingo that we speak, how we talk, you feel me? And the other song is more like showcasing pain, you feel me? Talking about, you know what I'm saying, a past, not just one past ex, but a few past exes. So I would say DMX is one of my favorites, and Ye is my other favorite. I would, I would, I would have to say, if I pick a top three, after that, I will put either No Mo or, yeah, either No Mo or, or Reverse. Those would be the top okay. three. Top three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I say ain't, no, say ain't nothing wrong with that. I could definitely, I could definitely rock with those, those selections, you know what I'm saying? Because um, they definitely are some dope, you know what I'm saying, uh, artists that that's really laying the foundation and really laying the groundwork. So most definitely yeah. so. Um, so what is so what advice out there, you know, say with every, again, with everything that's going on, what advice do you have people to, to the people out there that is trying to find the answers, trying to find out ways to help, trying to find ways to make to make to create change? What advice would you give to the world out there that's listening that they need to take to apply to their life to get to help them to do better? Open your motherfucking ears. Everything you need to know is right in front of you. Stop ignoring the obvious just because media and other people tell you otherwise. Do not let anybody else write your narrative. Believe in yourself. Continue to push forward no matter what. I mean what I say. Like, no matter what, my nigga. Weather the storm, my nigga. Become a diamond from coal. Do not quit. A lot of motherfuckers who make it was at it for a long time. Motherfuckers right. just don't tell you that. They say don't let them see you sweat. You don't reveal the game plan. People just know what you did, but they don't know how you did it. You got to keep that. Don't know your struggle, but you. Don't nobody see your vision until you make them see your vision. Right. So while you trying to make it and people telling you, oh, don't do that, don't do that, that's not a smart decision. That's not, they telling you to take the safe route. Right. They was taught to take the safe route. We don't do that no more. Right. We make sure that we have a plan A, B, C, and D, and you push. Right. Push matter what niggas right. you know i've been pushing this shit for a minute a minute only real a lot of one of the main questions people ask me is why i'm not famous yet that's like the biggest compliment and the most irritating question i get at the same time because i it's a way it's like nigga i agree with you i would love to know why the fuck i'm not famous help me understand please and right. then it's on the other end it's like you know they, they recognize your talent and that that so that i'm a nice fucker. i just need the right person to see me so they can sign my check most That's definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. Okay. Sometimes stay humble, man. Okay. So, so let me, so now let me ask you this question. So, when it comes to people that you rock with, people that you fuck with, how do they feel about your career in in, in music? Like, do they support it? Do they rock with it? Or do they? Or are they? Or are there people out there that tell you, "Oh, you shouldn't be doing this"? How, I mean, how's that? How's that transition for you? I'm laughing because my response to this question is gonna be funny as hell to me. I don't blunt motherfucker. Everybody who knows me knows I'm gonna keep a G. I've had semi support. I have people who I'm gonna say everybody's had this support. Oh, you can do it. I believe in you. Go ahead. But I don't have that real support the will. When I tell somebody I'm performing, these niggas won't buy a ticket. See if you can't spend five, ten dollars to buy a ticket for me, but you can go spend Forty or you know what I'm saying, fifty dollars to go see a nigga you ain't never known in your motherfucking life. That's not support, and I ain't throwing salt. It's just that tell me you support me just because one time you was like, oh, you gonna make it? What? Right? Niggas was saying, niggas say some shit like that even once or twice and be like, yo, you remember I believed in you when you was? Huh? Hype down, little nigga. What you talking about? I appreciate it. I appreciate the shit, but that's not support. I don't, you know, right. I appreciate the positive, but that's not support. That's doing the bare minimum. So the people who have supported me, like, unconditionally, like, and I mean that, and I know to the extent that they can do. Like, my man, Maniac, that's my homeboy off of PS4. Me and this nigga have been rocking for damn near almost, almost 10 years. I know it's been more than five, because the nigga knew me before my daughter. Now, my daughter is about to turn five today. My daughter's birthday okay, is happy birthday. Look, hey, ha hey, happy yeah, birthday, happy birthday to your daughter, man. Harley, my daughter named Harley. Happy birthday to Harley, to Relly, you know Happy birthday, Harley. Another year older. Thank you, man. But he knew me before that. So 
And he's been following my music, my snap for a minute. I've had people like who really do support a nigga, you feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? My mom, my mom has been there doing what she can. My brother has been the biggest supporter of my music ever. And I can't, look, my brother is the main person in my corner willing to pay for my studio time, willing to help market me, willing to help get shit copyrighted, willing to like manage me. Like, my brother has really, really been the main person in my corner. So I would thank him before I thank anybody else. No, honestly, he'd be the first person I have to thank. Because some days I feel like his motivation, his, his, the shit he do, it push me to continue. So I really appreciate this. Okay, well, definitely shouts out to your brother, man. Definitely for sure. And that's definitely a good way and a good person to have in your corner that really supports you, just like just as much as you said, because. I feel like anytime you have support, you're gonna always find a way to level up some kind of way and event and you know and continue to elevate yourself. You know, so, right. so it's always good. To have, so it's always good to have that positivity and that strong like mindset that can be like, hey, you know, no matter what people say, no matter what's well, no matter what's done in the world, you know, go out there and be the biggest superstar that you can be. You know what I mean? Thanks, thanks, thanks. That's All why right, I just so keep now, pushing, bro. Exactly. So now I want to, now again, switching gears. So now I want to switch to a different topic. You know, so when uh, it comes, to, you know, so now when it comes to online dating and things of that nature, you know, you got, you, you know, you got, you got, you got, you got guys out here that's going for, you know, that's going for the most baddest girls, the most baddest females and things of that nature. But how right. do you feel about, how do you feel about when it comes to, when it comes to cheating? How do you feel about it? Do you feel like it's, e do you feel like it's an even thing or do you feel like, you know what I'm saying? That, or do you feel like we need to get back to that real love, that real just one-on-one -on -one type of communication to where, you know, whatever the situation may be, we could talk it out and we could still be lovey-dovey at the end of the day. How do you feel about that? Shout out to my motherfucking nigga, Don Magic, you feel me? Like, that nigga Magic with the word, man. He jumped up in here, so nigga some support. Definitely big shout out to him, man. Shout big out shout to out. everybody. Nigga, I ain't met you yet, but I got to meet you, boy. We got work to do. You feel me? So shout out to my boy KO the Great man. He on the way. He got shit coming in the mix too, man. We definitely got things jumping, man. For real. Um, the whole team, do, man. The whole team, for real. David, do goddamn Donald, goddamn three. You feel me? We on the way, bro. Just just be on the lookout. Them names is gonna be something soon. Already, but, I'm definitely be on the lookout for them for sure. But how I feel about this shit, like man, I just feel like this, bro. At the end of the day. You got to learn somebody. So don't, when you first meet somebody, no, you do not know if you want to fucking be with them for the rest of your life. And if you got to test out the waters, y'all testing the waters, just have that communication and let a motherfucker know what's up, man. Just keep it G. Ain't got, if you got to lie, or well, I ain't going to say lie. If you got to say I love you to get some pussy, just stop, bro. Just stop. You got to go work on your game, bro. Right. That's one thing I think, bro, like, at the end of the day, if you got to lie and say I love you to get some pussy, if you ain't lying to motherfucker saying I love you, then I feel like you ain't doing nothing that bad. But right. if you take something that deep and you talking about some of y'all in that deep of a relationship with that type of emotion and you want to turn around and just use that just to get some pussy then turn around and, or get some dick or, you know, waste a nigga time and use a nigga for money or niggas using bitches for money, like all that shit, bro, I got to stop that shit because that's why motherfuckers is like that. Everybody's scared. Everybody's scared. You feel me? Everybody, everybody trying to finesse everybody. That's all it is. For right. Niggas trying to finesse niggas out their pocket. Niggas trying to finesse and get the pussy without paying for it. Everybody trying to finesse. You feel me? They don't want no tan, man. They right. don't want no tan, man. So, so, so with that. Shout being, out to you, Vicky. What's happening, Vicky? Shout so, out to so, you, so with that being, so with that being said, let me ask this question. So, you know, how do you feel about when it comes to women, perhaps per se, when it comes to women and them feeling like. Oh, you know, they have the right to, you know, check your phone or check your social media or whatever the case may be. How do you feel about that situation? Do you feel like, you know, it should, once again, do you feel like it should be an even thing where it's yes. like, if you got to check my shit, I should be able to check your shit? Or do you feel like it's really pointless? I mean, that shit pointless. First off, if you feel like you got to check behind somebody's shit, you feel me, man? I don't need to spot. I feel like people ignore the red flags that's in front of their face. You hear me? Like, you know somebody. You ain't stupid. So when you see that shit, that's when you approach them. It's the fact that you allowed them to lie to your face that piss you off. Because you ignore your own judgment while trying to get them to get in front of the doubt and trust them. You got to learn how to balance that. So at the end of the day, if I feel like I got to look through a bitch's phone, 
that relationship ain't real to me. We not together. We just right. fucking. Because if we really together, together, there should be no doubt in my mind that I'm the only dick that you think about. I ain't, exactly. ain't got to worry about it. It ain't about you seeing another nigga attractive. I keep can't my eyes on. A fly nigga walk by you, you're going you to look. A bitch with a fat ass walk by me, I might look. But it's levels to it. You don't disrespect your spouse. If my girl right beside me, unless we looking together, I don't look at all. My head don't turn. You know what I'm saying? Right. I just don't do that. That's not how I operate. If you open the door and you know what I'm saying, that bullshit to come into your relationship, that's your fault. And listen okay. to third parties. That's my thing. Don't listen to third party, bitches and niggas. Stop listening to your homeboys and stop listening to your right. friends. And I, right, and not to cut you off, but I was just getting ready to, I was just getting ready to say, now, you know, you mentioned third party. Now, do you feel like that's the quickest way for a relationship to end? Because 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 if you notice, a lot of the relationships have ended that way. You know, you listen to your homeboy, you listen to your homegirl, and it's like, why the fuck am I listening to you for? It's such a going on you, you, and that's, and that Right. Goes to, and that you goes talking to too. somebody that's bitter. Right. Like, you can't, like, me going to a homeless nigga, I'm going to make a million dollars a day. You can't, I, if you want advice, you talk to somebody in a successful relationship. Talk to somebody who is happy. Don't go to your homeboy or homegirl who be on that fuck niggas, fuck bitches shit. They already bitter, bro. Right. They already bitter. Right. Y'all wasting y'all time with the wrong people. Like, you have to assess the situation. The same thing is, how I always look at it is, I ask myself, what part did I play first? I right. know why I feel upset. You know why you feel upset as a person. Right. You know what keeps you up. But you also have to take that step back, look in the mirror, and realize it takes two people to argue, two people to tangle. At what point did you do something wrong? See, right. I think Nipsey Hussle said it the best. Work on how you how you react. You feel disrespected. I feel like a lot of people in relationships treat their spouse like a motherfucker in the street. You're not supposed to have pride with your spouse. Right. You, you calm down with that. You humble yourself. That's, right. that's the person you chose to fuck with. So they're right. the only one outside of, you know, mom, daughter, dad, whatever. That's right. the person you choose to give that benefit of the doubt to. So y'all can have that level of understanding. So right. If you ain't doing that, y'all I agree. Just left. Now, que now, question. Let me ask you this now. Uh, and I'm sure you, we all have been asked this question. But when it comes to, you know, who do you put first in the relationship, you know, they, they, you know, of course they got God, then they got your, you got your mom, and then you got your girl, then you got your kids. So who, who in that, who in that list goes first from from first to last? Who goes, who goes first in that, for you? I mean, I'm a on you know, words kind of nigga, so I'm gonna say everybody go first. And I mean that because each relationship is different. My relationship with my woman, she's the only person I'm in that relationship with, so she goes first. My relationship with my mother. That's a two people relationship. So she's first in that relationship. You know what I'm saying? If you're talking about how I prioritize though, because I know they say like mom, daughter, and wife. Or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Pro yeah, how do you, yeah, exactly. How do you pro prioritize that? Nobody's going before my child. I don't care. Nobody goes before my child. My child is, is only five. Today she turned five. So it's my job to cultivate her and help her grow. Anything else? You grown. You already lived your life. I love my mama to live. My mama was a grown woman. You feel me? She can take care. She took care of me. You feel me? Right. It's my job to take the things that I learned from her and do that now. It's my turn to do that for my child. My woman, she should know. Like I said, I feel like they, they don't go hand in hand because that's like your household. So your, your woman and your daughter go hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like to me, that's or your child. They, they, they both. I'm not going to say it's 100% equal. At the end of the day, if I have to, I'm a, my daughter, my my, my daughter will be first. It depends on the situation, you know what I'm saying? But okay. I definitely, um, I definitely look at it like both of them. I'm, I'm making everybody happy. Okay, I, I definitely, fuck with it. I definitely fuck with it. All right, so my next question: What's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten in your whole life? Shut the fuck up. Okay. Dead ass serious. I'm dead ass serious. Like silence is the best thing you can say. Okay. You don't say shit at all, bro. And motherfuckers, motherfuckers' minds want and make them think. It make run around with their head cut off. Right. Don't say shit. You don't say nothing. and You don't react. You don't show no emotion. Right. Don't let people see that they get to you. You won. Okay. 
Okay, I can I can definitely respect that. All right, so what's your what was your favorite childhood memory that you can remember? <laughs> Me and my cousin got down. The nigga who got Me and my cousin. Got down. Hold on, can you now? Yeah, I can hear you. I said, me and my cousin who got the um who did music together, you feel me? He um long story short, we snuck I snuck out in the house, jumped off my second floor, jumped onto the roof, jumped onto my bike, and skated to the gas station to the seven eleven. I think I stole like three, four, forty uh forty ounce old English beer. And we oh, came wow. back to and we would, uh, we would be smoking and drinking in my room, getting fucked up writing music. And uh, I just remember us laughing like hell, because I think I got caught. Because either yeah. I left one of the boxes outside, or I was loud. I don't remember what happened, but I think I got caught like the next day. They was like, yo, who the fuck was back here drinking beer? And I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I mean, hey, I, I'm sure they had to be one of those experiences, man, that you were just like, damn. I, I think I got caught, but thankfully, you know what I'm saying, I'm not locked up right now behind that shit, you know what I mean? Bro, I was like 16. I ain't give a damn, bro. I was just looking at my mama like, you gonna put me on punishment or what? I'm about to go play the game. Like. Right. <laughs> All right, so now, so, so now, so went to my next thing. So, are you are you real big? Are you more big on? Are you more big on sports, or are you big? Are you or are you more big on cars? What more? What more drives your your attention the most? Cars I or say more, I say more so because really neither. Because I'm, but I say I had to pick cars because sports is like the last thing I give a fuck about. Like I'm athletic. But that ain't what I do. Like, I don't want to watch sports. Like, if it's not somebody super famous, I don't know who the fuck they is. If, if the nigga name ain't like Dwayne Wade, you know what I'm saying? Or, or you know, Kyrie Irving or, you know, yeah. Steph Curry. I don't know who the fuck y'all niggas is, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. niggas be talking about stats. Don't, don't do that. I'm the wrong nigga to talk stats with, all that. I'm not doing that. I don't do that. Okay. I play so, video games. I play fighting games and shit. But I say cards. I guess I'm going to say cards. Yeah. Okay. So so what would you say? What would you say would be your favorite dream car that you would love to have, that, or that you would love to own? Ah, uh, we buffering, we buffering. Hope you guys are taking notes. Hope you guys are learning a lot. You know what I'm saying? This is a this is a very good conversation. Please feel free. You know what I'm saying? To jot these notes down. But yeah, you said I was asking. I was asking what would be your favorite dream car? My favorite dream car. Yeah. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say my dream car would have to be between a customized Audi I8 or a customized Porsche. Oh, okay. Yeah, my top three. My top three is Audi, Porsche. And then I like um, Tesla. Okay, I, I can see I can see you owning one of those. Okay, so now shit, nigga, me too. <laughs> I can I can definitely see you whipping out in there. You know what I mean? All right, so you mentioned so you so you mentioned video games earlier. So what video games do you, are you interested in? You said fighting games and stuff like that, and you know things like that. But what games? You, have beat you the fuck up. I want to play. I like all fighting games, especially Super Smash. I play Smash. I play Street Fighter. Marvel's Capcom, Blaze Blue. If you can think of it, I probably play it. Even them anime, Asian, Japanese games. I play shit a lot of niggas don't know about. So if you want some smoke, TSN is Johnny Two Six. Just put the H before the O and change that. Why? You good money, huh? I like shooting games too. Out the okay. gate, Call of Duty is a must. So if you're trying to catch that smoke, War Warzone, whatever. Um, I do mobile games. I, I play on my phone. You know what I'm saying Battle Royale shit. So. I'm just real competitive. I got a competitive spirit, so it's just like I talk shit, but it's more like I'm a competitor. You see me? Like I like to, I like to push the envelope. That's right. Like, okay. Now my other question. So going up once again, going back, going back, going back, a, going back a few years to you were, to when you was a kid. Now, when growing up, were you more of the like, were you more of like the popular kid in school, or was you just more in your own flow, more in your own lane? Like, how, how was how was that for you? I mean, it's, it's half and half, I guess, because say I was popular. 
it won't like I was popular in the sense of I was popular in the sense that everybody fucked with me. Like I was a cool nigga. Like it's like, what would you have beef with him for? Like that nigga just chill. All he do is smoke, rap. He a goofy nigga. He like laugh. Like I ain't never really bothered nobody. But I had an ugly duckling story. I ain't start getting bitches. I ain't start getting nothing until I was in like the tent. And I mean, other than that, I just stayed to myself. I always was a blunt person. I always talked my shit and kept it a hundred. But you know what I'm saying? I mean. I was I was pretty chill. I stayed to myself. Okay, okay, okay. And last but not least, I want I gotta ask you. So when it comes to you know the landscape of music, um, you know when, you, when we think when you think about the sixties, the seventies, the eighties, the nineties, the two thousands, then you had two thousand tens, you had today's regime of music. But for you, how do you feel like that transition from then to now has changed, or do you feel like it had, or do you feel like it's changed, or do you feel like it need to be brought back. The substance need to be brought back. How do you feel about that whole, that whole, that whole, that whole denomination? I mean, I feel like, I feel like it grows. It elevates. Like for instance, music sort of changes and stays the same. It just rearranges itself. I'm gonna say that. You got the only thing that comes in music that's new is when you create new genres, like trap soul or you know. You know, jazz, hip hop, you mixing two already, but I'm gonna say I don't think it necessarily changes. It's just like I said, it rearranges itself. Cause for instance, people used to say, "Oh, we don't talk about it in our music." But if you know Curtis Mayfield, he got an old song called "Pusher Man." Where he just talked right. about being your neighborhood dope dealer. Like me, he said, "You got, I got coke, I got weed. Hit my phone. What you need? I'm yo pusher man." That nigga ain't I talking about that. number. Home that. You know what I'm saying? That's the soundtrack to Superfly. Been remade. See what I mean? Retro. Everything repeats itself. They remade Superfly. They remake songs. They sample songs. So to me, music just grows, man. It's, it's no one lane for music. Music is a very wide highway with a million different fucking lanes. You feel me? That's why it's like anybody can get in it. You don't have to be a specific way to be in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? This. Niggas who make it, they the oddballs, they the crazy ones, they the ones that ain't afraid to go step out the box and do what the fuck they want to do because that's what make people want to watch you. And I was born an oddball, I don't have to do shit. I mean, like I have like 37 years, I really don't give a fuck. I'm just me. Right, and I was, and I was gonna, add, and I was, and that, bring, and that brought me to my five questions to close us out. So, about these pieces, what, what, what made you? You know, want to you know get this many piercing and get into the whole piercing, the whole piercing mentality. What made you get into that? I don't know. Shit, I'm like halfway a white boy. I guess I don't know. Like my first time getting piercing, I fucking realized that first off, pain is on um, pain. Is a then it was more so like I found out that piercing and stuff like this really originate in Africa. They did you know with the big wooden spoon holes and they look and shit like that. You feel me? This shit come from our homeland. So it was a way to pay tribute, and then it's just me. I got my first one, which was this one. Got addicted. Then I went and got an eyebrow ring, took it out. Then I went and got a nose ring. Then I went and got this. Then I went and got a second one. Then I went and got that. And I went and got that. So, I mean, it's just sort of became something I like. You feel me? Like, I'm addicted to tattoos and piercings. I love them. And you know what's crazy? Because they always say tattoo pain and piercing pain is the best pain. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like, that's the only how to explain it. Well, that and fucking. If you like rough sex, yeah, that's, that's, that's another good pain, too. But, um, yeah, tattoo pain, because it's not really painful. It's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, man. It's just, yeah, it's, you feel it's, it. It's, yeah, you definitely feel it, but yeah, at the same time, you know, you know, once you get it, you know what I'm saying? It's not that's going to stay with you for life type shit. Right, right, right. Well, bro, I said I want to say right now, I, take, I thank you for taking the time out to come and chop it up with me on episode seventy five. It's been real, you know. What I'm saying I definitely learned a lot, you know. What I'm saying I definitely took some notes in my head, you know. What I'm saying I hope you guys that's been watching have took some notes and learned a lot from my boy right here. Make sure you guys stay tuned next week. I got some dope talent coming through next week. Um, but like I said, bro, I appreciate you, and I hope to chop it up with you again somewhere down the road. You know what I mean? Out the gate, man. Of course, man. Stay up, honey. So y'all follow your boy. You hear me? Right. Salute, my guy. All right. All right.
And there you guys have episode 75 with your boy Hancho J. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. If you want to see more episodes like this, you can go to my IGTV page and look and check out more episodes like this to, you know, get locked in or what, with what I do and with what I got going on. And if you or anybody else want to be a part of the show, feel free to DM me. You, can, you guys can follow me on all platforms at Hancho J23. That's H-O-N-C-H-O-J-A-Y 23 on all platforms. I'm everywhere. Feel free to follow me. Subscribe to me, all that good stuff, you know what I mean? Because I'm everywhere, you know what I'm saying? I will definitely get you in if you're serious, if you want to talk chop it up with me and just talk your shit. Hey, because like I said, this is a no-judgment zone. This is a positive zone. This is a good vibe zone. You know what I'm saying? No hate, no discrimination, no racial nothing, none of that, you know what I mean? So with that being said, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I support y'all. I thank y'all for watching. And um, as I always say, stay safe, stay blessed. And as I close out every single broadcast, peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Once again, peace and blessings. This is your boy, Hunter J23, with episode 75 of the Independent Scene, and I'm out.